Well, as I like to say, not totally dishonestly, I'm the kind of doctor you never want to go to see. Um, what I take care of are children predominantly with, well, the most serious disorders we care for are congenital disorders, genetically determined disorders where the blood and the bone marrow do not work right. And then my colleagues that take care of a lot of oncology patients, of course, where the children very young have developed cancer. And so the cancer predisposition is more likely to be genetic rather than environmental. There isn't a 40-pack year history of smoking when you're four. Pediatrics. The child exists in the constellation of their family. And so you approach it by making sure the child knows what's going to happen. We certainly believe in making sure they understand the why to the extent they can understand. A two-year-old's why is very different than a 12-year-old's why, and an 18-year-old's why is much worse than a 40-year-old's. But we try to make sure the child understands what, and the parent, grandparent, or guardian understands why, knows if there are choices, and I think we have to spend a lot more time explaining options, but that's true of all pediatrics. I think that it's out there a little bit more. I think, you know, Char Why Charlie Brown Why is a cartoon about a child who loses their hair to leukemia therapy, but on the other hand, one in 500 children. So in every United States elementary school, one kid every 15 to 20 years has leukemia. And we say that now. In when I was growing up 40, 50 years ago, a child with leukemia didn't survive, so no one talked about them or they died. So we now have to talk about, to the child, to the family, this is what we're going to do to let you survive. There may be consequences, and we'll deal with the consequences with you, but also we make sure that you understand. We expect you to go to school. We expect you to be part of life, whether you have a cancer predisposition, one of the genetic hemoglobinopathies or blood conditions that I predominantly treat, or cancer. You can't stop being a kid just because you got some horrible diagnosis. Well, I think the biggest change um, over the 30 years that I've been practicing has been that we now can make a genetic diagnosis, which means while we may not change the diagnosis for Tariq or Antoine or Jane, we will give the option for their siblings to not be conceived or born with it, for their siblings and their relatives to understand that the condition exists in the family and to be tested, do they carry it? Number two, we can make more specific diagnoses. We can say this is genetic or familial, and this is not. What are the advances in treatment, I think, that are the most remarkable are simply supportive care, simply the ability to provide to the littlest child the three-year-old, the seven-year-old, those things which are provided for adults on a scale that's appropriate to them and in a way that isn't dangerous to them. Number so two, the fact that despite the fact that we have a very, very aggressive drug approval policy in the United States, almost every medicine I use for children is off-label hmm. because nobody's bothered to get approval from the Food and Drug Administration. And we have childhood exemptions. If you are in good faith, and I as a university professor with my colleagues have agreed this is the right way to treat a child, be it the therapy for acute lymphoblastic leukemia, common childhood leukemia, or the very strange genetic disorders or blood vessel disorders that I take care of, if the medicines work and I can give them safely in childhood, I can use them even if it's not for the right indication. The difficulty for most pediatric subspecialists is simply realizing that as we get the kids to that 18th birthday, there isn't care for them. Maybe with the Affordable Care Act there will be a transition of care between 18 and 26, but what happens when you're 26 years in one day? You, these are genetic disorders, these are lifelong disorders that require care. And so the services I can offer, which is great because these kids now grow up, sickle cell anemia, Thalassemia major with iron overload from transfusion. We now have chelators, they can live, we like to tell families forever, but we know we're telling a little bit of a white lie, that unless they manage to remain insured, remain with access to care, that this care goes away. We changed a lot of conditions that used to be fatal into manageable conditions. Potent immunosuppressive agents developed usually for bone marrow transplant or solid organ transplants now can control a lot of immune disorders that are also cared for by hematologists.